So why uh, thermal conductivity is important? Uh, ten years ago, we had the geothermal project uh, where we harmonized uh, the thermal and hydrogeological data amongst, uh, oops, amongst uh, Hungary, uh, Austria, Slovakia, and uh, Slovenia. We constructed uh, different uh, maps, uh, heat flow maps, uh, temperature maps, uh, and then when uh, we constructed these maps, uh, then uh, I've noticed that uh, the heat flow in uh, Slovenia is uh, higher than in Hungary, and at the same time the temperature is uh, is almost the same uh, in uh, one kilometer depth and in two kilometer depths as well. So I ruled out uh, groundwater flow because the, there is no sign in the temperature uh, field. There's no difference in the temperature field. So I saw that one reason can be that we used uh, uh, the Slovenian colleagues use different thermal conductivity than uh, we used. Uh, so which is uh, the good one? We don't know. Even we, even now we don't know. Uh, so this was, this was one in initiative to start uh, to determine the thermal conductivities uh, or redetermine the thermal conductivities in Hungary. Uh, the other reason was we that we don't have uh, a geothermal lab anymore, so we don't measure uh, thermal conductivities, but we have old data. How to reuse the old data when we interpret uh, new uh, heat flow data or we reinterpret the old data. Uh, in case of the sediments, uh, the reason, uh, the best way is to use uh, well logging. Uh, well loggings. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, let's see the old data. Uh, the old data were measured by a transient line uh, source uh, instrument, uh, and uh, the instrument was calibrated before each measurement with uh, known standards. Uh, and then uh, the samples were uh, waxed uh, to preserve the original uh, pore fluid content except a few of them. We know that which samples uh, were dried and resaturated in, uh, in the lab. And then more than uh, 300 samples were measured uh, on the sediments. And uh, these are the curves which were uh, constructed uh, by my colleagues uh, for fine grain sediments and for coarse grain sediments. And we still use these uh, curves because in case of a well, we, if we know the lithology, uh, if it uh, we have the plastic sediments, mainly shales and sandstones. So based on uh, the lithology, we can use these uh, thermal conductivities and then we can calculate the heat flow. That's how this, uh, this heat flow map was uh, constructed. The heat flow in Hungary is uh, quite high. It is uh, over uh, 80 milliwatt per square meter. In some cases, it is over uh, 120 milliwatt per square meter. And the reason is that uh, Hungary is located in the middle of the Pannonian Basin, which is a young uh, extensional basin filled with neogene sediments. That's why the sediments are so important. Here is uh, the basement map. And then in the red places, the thickness of the sediments is uh, more than uh, seven kilometer. And in the rest of the basin, the average thickness is one or uh, two kilometer. And here you can see that uh, that trough in the Slovenian Hungarian border, it is a five kilometer deep trough. So we have the same uh, type of rocks on both sides of the border. So, uh, okay. So the best way to constrain the thermal conductivity is uh, or uh, recalculate it to use uh, uh, well logs, uh, because from the well log uh, we can make a geological, uh, a lithological model, and from the lithological model we can uh, calculate the thermal conductivity. So we can use it for uh, uh, heat flow uh, calculations. Um, of course, the method uh, should be calibrated, uh, and we have. Uh, those wells uh, from where the thermal conductivity measurements uh, uh, derive. We used uh, seven of these uh, so-called master wells because not only core samples were taken from these wells, but uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, geophysical logs in these wells. We used uh, natural gamma ray, density logs, porosity logs, uh, uh, resistivity logs. And then uh, we were able to check uh, 100 uh, uh, seven core samples, and in most of the cores, two or three uh, repeated measurements uh, were made. So we have 260, 230 thermal conductivity measurements. So, uh, then we made uh, a geophysical inversion algorithm, uh, which uses uh, weighted uh, least squares. Uh, here you can see the logs uh, and uh, weights are the uncertainty of the measurement. This is, for example, the gamma ray log. And from uh, the logs, we made a three-component model. 
which is uh, composed of uh, shale, uh, sandstone, and uh, pore water. And we were able also to judge the uncertainty of the lithological model as well. And here in the last column, you can see the lithological model. Uh, the equations, then we checked the model as well. Uh, we uh, recalculated uh, the observed, uh, sorry, the observed and uh, uh, these are the observed uh, gamma rays and uh, uh, these are the observed and this is the uh, recalculated one. So this is a quite uh, good fit. So we say that the lithological model is uh, good. So then uh, how to arrive to the thermal conductivities? As we saw before, there are several uh, mixing models. Uh, we use the, the s most simple uh, mixing models, uh, calculating the arithmetic uh, geometric harmonic uh, means and the lower and the upper Hashin uh, Strickman uh, bounds. And uh, here you can see the results. Uh, the blue dots are the shales. Uh, the uh, yellow dots are the sandstones. And as we all know from the literature that the arithmetic and the upper Hashin Strickman model uh, overestimates uh, the calculation overestimates the measured values uh, and uh, the fit is better in case of the lower Hashin Strickman, uh, the geometric mean and in the harmonic uh, mod uh, mean model. But from this figure it was evident that we are not able to uh, reproduce uh, at the same time uh, the thermal conductivity of sandstones and shales using the same mixing model. Because in case of the sandstones, the lower Hashin Strickman and the geometric mean gives quite good uh, fit. But these two models overestimate uh, the thermal conductivity of the shales. So in case of the shales, we have to use another uh, mixing. So then uh, we recalculated uh, everything. We uh, split the samples to shales and uh, sandstones. And then we made uh, recalculations. One uh, important uh, issue is how much is the uh, thermal conductivity of the pure shale and the pure uh, sandstone. We did it. We calculated those uh, by fitting. And then uh, we made uh, the recalculation. Here you can see the unified uh, uh, thermal conductivities of shales and sandstones together. And then here are the uh, uh, calculated ones, here are the measured ones, and the uh, fit is quite good. Uh, the correlation is 0 0.3, and the root mean square error is 0 0.5. And uh, I mentioned that we knew that some samples were not vexed. Uh, those samples uh, are shown by uh, green uh, dots. Uh, all the other uh, samples uh, give quite a uh, good fit. And then, uh, we have, uh, then we were able to calculate the continuous uh, thermal conductivity log uh, shown by red. The black dots uh, are the uh, measured thermal conductivities. And then we calculated uh, the heat flow using uh, uh, the usual method using the uh, Bullard plot uh, techniques. Uh, we took into account uh, the temperature and pressure dependence of the thermal conductivities. And we did it for the seven wells, which I uh, showed uh, before. And as you can see, uh, these are the earlier heat flow determinations. These are the new heat flow determinations. And then you can see that uh, they are quite uh, similar to each other. In some cases, they are, uh, give almost the same value. So they are within error limit, uh, except one uh, drilling, uh, the MP1. Uh, well, and what can be the reason? The reason, of course, in the thermal conductivities, uh, because the temperature were the same. So we plotted the thermal conductivity in this well. The reds are the measured uh, thermal conductivities. The black uh, curve is the uh, thermal conductivity derived from the well logs. And the blue curve is uh, the thermal conductivity model, which is used in the former uh, heat flow uh, calculation. So um, this uh, figure shows that uh, how, the, how we calculate the heat flow or when we don't know the thermal conductivity or uh, what we did before, we had a geological model. For example, he's a, he's a formation. And uh, while well, the colleagues uh, assigned the thermal conductivity for this formation, for another formation, and so on. So that's how the point-wise uh, thermal conductivity measurements were extended to, to a formation. And actually, that's what the process which we generally do uh, to establish the heat flow. And uh, 
if we have other uh, information than the well logs, then we can have a much uh, precise or uh, better uh, heat flow determination. But I also have to note that uh, we arrived almost to the same uh, heat flow data. So I must say that uh, using the traditional way that if we know the lithology and we have some quite good uh, thermal conductive measurements in lab, then those, uh, that method is still uh, is useful. Uh, but again, uh, if we have some more information, then we can improve uh, that model. So I think uh, that's the final conclusion, except that I cannot answer uh, to the original question that why uh, the heat flow is higher in Slovenia, because we, we haven't done any, uh, how to say, uh, uh, work on that yet, but it, uh, in progress, we'll, uh, we'll do that uh, in the near future. So thank you.